Hey, what's up guys? It's Covert Code here, and welcome back to episode 19 of our Zero to Hero series. In the last episode, I showed you guys how to use the pair loops, and in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use remote events and functions. So, this time I'm actually going to delete this script, okay? And for this video, we're going to be introducing local scripts. So, as usual, let's just create a normal script inside of server script service. So go to the insert objects tab and insert a script and call this receiver or something like that, okay? And inside of starter GUI, just insert a local script and call this sender, okay? Just like that, let me just zoom in a bit here for you guys, like that. And let's clear both of these scripts, okay? So, inside of replicated storage, we're going to create one remote event and one remote function okay just like that now when you're developing you have to start thinking about the game as a whole as you know two different things there's the client end and there's the server end okay and pretty much the client end is responsible for anything which the client itself does and by client i mean the player so if you have a gui on your screen and only you can see this gui obviously then that is controlled by a local script because that is directly attributed to your player, okay? And the same goes for anything really, which is meant to be done on the client. So if you want a certain player to see something, so if you want to delete something for one player only, then you would do that on the local script, okay? Because if you do something from a local script, keep in mind that it does not affect the world in general, okay? And that is because of filtering enabled, okay? So this property right here inside of workspace, if this is enabled, then the client and the server are pretty much split up with a firewall, essentially. So let me show you something. Let me play the game, okay? And let me just insert something uh, using a local script. Actually, let me just stop. And using this local script, I'm just going to say instance.new part. Okay, I'm gonna put that inside of workspace, uh, store that in a variable, for example, and then we uh, position equals vector three dot new zero three zero. Okay, I'm just spawning in a part with the local script. So let me just click play, and as you guys can see, the part is going to be present uh, on my client. So the part's right here. But if you go to test and click this button here, so it's telling you that currently you're on the client, click that, and now you are on the server, as you can see up here, okay? And as you guys can see, there is no part on the server, because that part was created with a local script, okay? And remember, local scripts can only act and change things on the client, okay? If I was another player just walking around, I would not see the part unless that same part was created on my client as well okay so that might be a bit confusing but now i'm actually going to show you how to sort of use the two things okay so let's say you want that part to spawn in for everyone okay not just yourself you want this to be also visible for your friends or whatever whoever's playing the game so you would go to this and you would delete this code, okay? And you're just going to type this in. So game dot replicated storage dot remote event fire server, okay? And all you're doing is you're finding that remote event inside of your game, which is this, okay? And you're firing it just like that. And what firing does is essentially you're sending a message to the server, okay? And you're telling it, hey, I want something to happen because I just you know, uh, invoked or fired that event. And if you just click play now, nothing's gonna happen, okay? Uh, because for something to actually happen, you need to listen for that event. And as you guys can see, nothing happened, okay? The event was fired, yes, but nothing was listening to the event. What I mean by listening is, if you're telling the server that you want something to happen when this gets fired, you need someone, or in this case, a script, to listen to this event and essentially when it you know hears something it's going to do whatever you guys want it to do and let me just show you how and you, you'll understand okay open up the server script now okay and you're just going to say game.replicatedStorage.RemoteEvent same thing but on server event connect 
um, fired, okay? So let me just create a function. So local function fired, just like this. And essentially, same thing, you're just finding the remote event, but instead of, con um, instead of firing it like last time, okay, we are actually saying on server event. So whenever a server event happens, so whenever this uh, fire server thing happens, then a server event happens, okay? What I mean by this is, let me just show you guys a diagram on the screen now, but essentially you're sending a message and this is receiving that message, okay? And same thing with events, you're just connecting that to a function and stuff will happen here, okay? So let me just print out, hey, and if I click play now, the, I mean, the client end is going to fire an event and it's going to print out something on the server, just like this, okay? And it's actually going to say server right here. And I remember not fully covering this um, in episode two, I think episode two, uh, which was about printing, okay? But essentially, now you should pay attention to this because that will tell you where it's coming from, if it's coming from the server or the client. And simply put, if you want this to spawn in a part, so you just do local v equals instance not new, uh, workspace, actually you're not gonna create a workspace, you want to create a part inside a workspace. Um, okay, you're just gonna position that to three or something, zero, three, zero. So now if you click play, um, you're essentially sending a message from the client and you're telling the server to spawn in a part like this, okay? And now, since we actually did that thing, you know, we spawned in a part using a server script, it is also available on the server as well as the client, okay? So now if you had more players in your game, you would actually be able to see the same part, okay? Now, what we just did, you know, using remote events, you can use this for a wide array of purposes. So just keep in mind that uh, you can do this now and that the game is split up into two different parts. Now, remote events are pretty much done. Now, remote functions, however, are essentially the same thing with one small twist. So let's open up the local script and let me show you how to send a signal to the remote function. So game.replicatedStorage.remote function, so all you're doing is finding that function, and you're just going to do invoke server like that. And instead of using fire server, you're just using invoke server. Pretty simple, okay? Now here's the thing. Remote events don't return anything. So you know how functions, you have like, like a uh, local function, test, you know, you can return stuff, just like this. Remote events are essentially this without the return. So you're not gonna get anything back from this, okay? So that means that if you do this, local x is equal to that and local y, okay, is equal to this, X will always be nil, okay? So that's nil like that. And Y will usually return something, okay? Because remote functions can and will usually return something. And I'll show you how in just a minute. So we're going to go to the server script and we're just going to do game.replicatedStorage.remote function, but on server invoke, and you're just going to say fired function just like this and this is going to be the name of the function so local function fired function just like that and all we're doing is the same thing we're finding that function okay that remote function and you're using dot on server invoke instead of on server event and instead of connecting like an event you're essentially setting that to a function okay so whenever this gets invoked this function will happen just like that and here, if I want to wait five seconds, okay, and return true, the function is going to wait five seconds, okay, so essentially, at the same time, this script will pause until this returns anything, okay? So this is also going to be paused for five seconds. Um, so this is going to wait for five seconds, it's going to return true, and after this is, uh, returns true, I'm just going to say print return returned, and why, okay? So if I click play, essentially the part will be created using the remote event, just like this, okay? I didn't delete that part. Um, it's waiting five seconds, it's going to return through, and now we're just going to print out or attempt to print out what we've got back. Um, my bad, you should have used the two string method on that, so two string y, okay? Click play again, and that's just going to say returned through, okay? 
Uh, so let me just do this, wait 5 seconds again, and it's going to return true again. Okay, return true. So, let me show you guys something else. Um, if you want to return uh, A there, okay, let's wait 2 seconds instead, uh, and click play. Now, what's gonna happen is it's gonna say returned A there, because when you communicate with the server, okay, you're sending a message, and the message that the server sends back is hey there, okay? So that's what this is. The remote events don't send you a message back, okay? The remote functions do send you a message back. So if you just say return, like, nothing, so if you just forget that return, uh, this is what happens, okay? So click play. Wait for that to load in, wait two seconds, and as you guys can see, it returned nil because you forgot to return anything, essentially, so it returned nothing. And what happens if you want to return the player name, you know? So, there is a parameter for both of the remote event and the remote function, okay? So, on server event and on server invoke, these events here, okay, whenever you fire a function, either like this or like this, they're always going to pass an argument like this. And that's going to be the player, okay? So, the first argument of any function, okay, which gets triggered by a remote event or a remote function, is always going to be the player. You can actually check that out in the wiki page in the description below, okay, which I'm gonna leave a link for. But essentially, the, the function which handles the remote event or the remote function, the first argument of that, always, always, is the player who invoked that function or event. So now if I want to return player.name, okay, it's gonna say returned covert code because that's my username, okay? So for that to load in, wait two more seconds, and as you guys can see, return covert code, okay? So that's pretty much all I have guys on remote events and remote functions. I hope you learned something from today's video because remember this is one of the most important videos when it comes to actually learning how to make games on your own. So yeah, uh, if you guys like this video, please leave a like, subscribe if you can, and if you have any suggestions about what videos I should make in the future, just leave a comment in the comment section down below suggesting what video you want me to make next, and I'll see you guys next time.